Welcome back to the second part of my conversation with Rob McDonald, former head of IP at Gowlings in Canada and IP icon around the world. Last time, we focused on Rob's career, mainly within the Canadian firm and his role in the opening of the Russian office, which has gone on to such success and prominence. This time, we're going to look at the merger of Gowlings and the firm which by that time was known as Rag Lawrence Graham in the UK. But when Rob and I first met, it was just Rag & Co. So Rob, I want to take you back to around 1990 mm -hmm. and the existence of a transatlantic friendship arrangement between Gowlings in Canada or Gowling and Henderson as it then was, I think in, in Canada, Smith, Gambrell and Russell in Atlanta, Georgia, and a group of firms in the UK of which Rag & Co was one, which went under the name of the M5 group. Is that ringing any bells with you? Indeed, I, I, I do remember the M5 group quite well. Uh, so I have to correct you on one thing. By, by then, we were Gowling, Strathy and Henderson. We had ah, yes. yeah. uh, with uh, Strathy, Archibald and Seagram in, I think, 89, um, just before uh, starting to, to um, develop a, rela a relationship with, with the M5 group and, um, and with uh, Smith Gambrell in, in um in Atlanta. So yeah, I remember that quite well. And because, because there was a strong IP connection, obviously, with, with Smith Gambrell and the M5 group, uh, I got to know a lot of um, the individuals, uh, including yourself, uh, way back when. Yes, indeed. That is indeed when we first met back then. And that was on a trip I made to, to Ottawa in December 1991, which I remember for a number of reasons. One, embarrassing, because I, I took a shower and um, made the schoolboy error of not properly drying my hair before stepping out into Ottawa's temperatures and my hair froze <laughs> and making giving you a good laugh when we went out for dinner in the evening but I think perhaps hopefully more more importantly I remember meeting the great Gordon Henderson now he was already a, a good age by then but he still was evidently revered and an influential figure in the office what, what do you what are your favorite stories what do you remember of, of Gordon Henderson what what how did he influence you well, you know, I think um, Gordon, Gordon, you know, I had the, the pleasure of, of meeting Gordon. Um, I, I recall seeing Mr. Gowling, Gordon Gowling. I don't recall ever talking to Gordon Gowling, but I did recall seeing him. Um, but Gordon Henderson had a great influence for a number of reasons. One was uh, he was an amazing, approachable person. Uh, and, and I remember particularly when I was a student, uh, 160 Elgin, uh, you didn't have to leave for lunch. There was a cafeteria in the basement. It's now long gone, but there was a cafeteria in the basement. And, and it was quite common for Gordon to go down and line up in the cafeteria and get his lunch and then go sit at a table. And, and everyone was welcome to, to sit with him, whether you were a student or a senior partner, it didn't matter. And, it, and he took great interest in who you were and what you were doing. And, and he would always know, I remember getting into the elevator with him one, one night and he turned to me and said, how is such and such a case going? And I was a little taken away that he even knew about the case, but he did. And, 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 and he was you know, honestly interested in, um, in, in what, uh, what you were doing. Um, and the other thing that, that I recall about Gordon particularly is, is, is he had a sense of vision. Right, he was the one because Auto Gambling was a, an Ottawa-based firm up until 1980. It was a big firm, but it was Ottawa-based, and, and and he was the one who sort of started us down this path of of growth. He said we needed to be in Toronto because that's where our clients were, so let's go, and and we did, and and um, you know it's been a great success, and we continued to grow beyond that. Um, he was an amazing man, and and, and his I think. He, there are there are less and less of us, obviously, in the firm. One less now because I'm gone. Uh, who who could say they they knew Gordon Henderson or they they remember Gordon Henderson? But um, I think the the um, his his influence on us remains and, and has driven the sort of firm that we are today. And his portrait looks down on you still, doesn't it? In the in the office in Ottawa. So, um, yeah, but I'd say I remember him. He certainly left an impression on me. Now, as a, a very young IP partner in a, in a small IP team in a regional UK firm, I was a bit starstruck by the sheer size and breadth of the work evidently going on in your team. Every, every office 
was a museum of, of products which have been the subject of litigation and every well-known brand in the world seemed to be there. Were you, were you conscious within that team of just how impressive the Gowling setup was at that time? Well, if you, if you go back to, to, you know, the eighties, uh, but go back even earlier, it, it was, um, up until the seventies, all intellectual property litigation had to take place in Ottawa. And so the, 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 the IP profession was, was dominated by a couple of firms in Ottawa. Um, and Gowling's was one of them going back to actually before the time of Mr. Mr. Gallagher and Mr. Henderson, we were involved in IP. Um, with the establishment of the federal court in the 70s, um, you, you saw growth, much more growth in Montreal and Toronto of the IP practices there. Um, but we remained uh, a very dominant force and, and we remained a dominant force because you know, people wanted Gordon Henderson, right? Or, 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 mm. or you know, Graham McLennan or Alex Macklin. To, to, to litigate for them. And so, yeah, you, you walk around there and you think the, the clients we're dealing with, and, and this goes back to a point that in our previous discussion, I, I mentioned the, you know, I started off in this, 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 this firm and the client base for the IP group was, was simply amazing. I got to deal with clients that, you know, you know my colleagues who I uh, were in other areas of the firm would look at me and say like, wow, those are amazing international clients. And, and, and they were. And so, yeah, you walk around the offices and you'd see all the sort of the, 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 the um, bookcases with, with products and samples and so on and so forth and sort of our badges of honor. It, it was fun. Well, I looked at that and thought, this is what I want. And yeah. maybe, maybe the first seeds of what was to follow were sown right there and then, I think. Back in those days, we used to work conferences together, didn't we? And particularly... Um, inter so this this transatlantic friendship group that we talked about um, used to get together and organize ourselves for inter we organized a table for the gala dinner on the last night and all that my, my first in conference inter conference actually it was still called usta at the time <clears throat> was actually in toronto i think 1993 do you remember that one it was 1992, and I remember it very well because yeah. my my oldest son Alexander was born just before just before Inte. He was born in March, and or just before USTA, um, and that was my first uh, USTA as well. I, I'd never been to one before, but because it was in Toronto, because I was the department head, I thought, well, I should go. And and it was the it was there that we did our very first Gowling's brunch. Uh, David Clark said, we need to do something to mark the occasion since it's in our backyard, we'll do the Gowling's Brunch. But for those people listening, you, you said something that's interesting. The Wednesday night sit down gala dinner, right? It, it, it yeah. speaks to how big USTA now into was then that you could actually reserve a table and have a sit down supper. Um, in, in that case, in Toronto, it was on the... Um, the turf of the uh, the Sky Dome. Yeah, it was quite quite something. I remember it well. I remember how competitive it was getting the best guests to your table. <laughs> <laughs> we all used to fight over you know that you wanted the, the big name in house yeah. attorneys at your table for that. I remember it. And of course, not long after that, in, um, by which by which time it was in, sir, the yeah. whole event um, went off to New Orleans, and that was possibly the most memorable of those early ones for you and I. I say memorable. Because there are aspects of it that I don't think we remember at all, are there? <laughs> <laughs> it, it was uh, it, it was it was memorable for a lot of reasons, uh, Gordon. It was actually at that that conference you recall where they voted to change the name from USTA to Inter. That's right. Yeah, it was in it was in New Orleans, uh, <clears throat> but I think it was in New Orleans that was the last the last time that they had the gala dinner on the Wednesday night, if I remember correctly. I certainly remember the dinner. I remember various events on pedal steam, paddle steamers on the Mississippi as well. I mean, it was, yeah. it was amazing. It really was amazing. And you and I will never know why we were involuntary, involuntarily removed from a nightclub where we were still no <laughs> I, 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 I thought you weren't going to mention that. Um, uh, no, I couldn't, I couldn't resist. Couldn't we'll, resist. Never, we'll never know what we did or why we, what, what happened. But yes, it, it was the one time in my, my life that where I was... Um, asked to to leave and and we did and went and found someplace else and continued on it was quite the uh, quite the evening 
So I, I stepped away from Inter for a little while after that and returned. I mean, my first one back was Denver 2001. And, and what happened pretty soon after that was that we started a tradition of co-hosting a dinner, you and I and some of our colleagues for guests around the world, different yeah. patent attorneys, clients and whatever. Um, so you no, know, the big transatlantic association had gone. So what was bringing us together then was just our old friendship, the fact that we you know, not got to know each other, the friendship between the firms and, and that had very much remained and between you and I. So. Do you think it ever occurred to you when we were sitting in various restaurants in places like Amsterdam and Berlin and, and Toronto again that, that something bigger might be around the corner? To be honest with you, no. I'm going to say uh, no. One of the things that, that struck me, though, uh, as I got to know your group, and obviously you got to know our group as well, um, was the, the cultural fit between the, the two the two, the two groups and, and the two firms. I mean, you and I were always friends. That's that's one thing, um, but but there was a good fit culturally between us. And, and and I remember those days. Of course, you know, you were you were using us in in Moscow, developing a relationship with our our office there. Um, and so it, it it you know it, it shouldn't come as a surprise that we ended up in Washington, <laughs> in Washington, talking about this, but. Up until that point, it, it hadn't really been on my radar screen, and it hadn't been on my radar screen because I think our firm, the Canadian side, was 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 still trying to figure out what it wanted to do in terms of international growth. Yeah, and, yeah. Well, the same thing was happening on our side, and that you talk. I was going to mention this in relation to the cultural fit because shortly before the momentous Washington D.C. inter, which we're going to come back to in a minute, I, I went on the Gowling's website just to have a little look around to see, you know, because I had a whimsical idea in the back of my head somewhere. And the thing that struck me was on the front page, there were two items. One was about your position in the Canadian Great Places to Work survey. And another was about a piece of serious pro bono work you were doing for First Nation people. And that was exactly the kind of thing I would have expected to see on the front page of our website. We were very proud and still are of our position in the Great Places to Work survey. And we're very proud of our pro bono and corporate responsibility work. And I remember looking at that and thinking, hmm, here are two firms that, that think alike, you know, that, that they're great successful legal institutions, but that with a with a moral compass as well. Um, it, it is so important to be on that same wavelength. So let's, let's jump into Washington DC 2012, Georgia Brown's restaurant. There isn't as yet a plaque on the wall, but there should be. <laughs> what, 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 do you rem what do you remember of that night? I think I'm just going to have to sneak down and, and install one when no one's looking. <laughs> um, I, I remember a very good conversation. It was, uh, you know, we, we were doing our, our typical, you know, let's get a group of people together and have a nice, you know, lunch or a nice dinner. You know, and we did. And um, I, I recall you turning to me at one point and saying, you know, are, is Gowling's thinking about international expansion? And, and we had a very, um, uh, a very good conversation. Uh, because at, at, by that point we were, uh, and I, I think Rag was as, as well. And um, I think you and I had a long uh, discussion about what that would look like, why it would be a good fit with the, the with our two firms. Um, and, and then you know I went back to to, to to Canada. You went back to the UK, and uh, raised the issue with with you know our our, our leadership and said. You know, this looks like an interesting opportunity. We should at least have a discussion to see if there's any any legs to it. And um, you were back in Toronto quite quite soon. Oh, yeah. Well, it was. I remember really well. It was a Monday evening, about two weeks after that we got back from Inter, and I was sitting in my living room, and I always used to keep my BlackBerry as I then had on my on the chair arm because you never know what might come in during the evening. And there was an email from you. And it's, um, you had said after the dinner in Washington, I'm going back to talk to Scott Jollop about this. And it was a very short email, um, which, which ended with a summary, Scott is intrigued, come to Canada. Hmm. And um, and I went back into the office the next day, spoke to our then chief exec, Quentin Paul, and, and we did just that very soon afterwards. Yeah. And the whole thing, you know, got rolling. And there was a lot of shuffling to and fro over the next few years. <laughs> we, we, may have, we may have come up with an idea, um, and then we had to sell it, right? It, it's not, uh, you, you, had to, you have to explain it, you had to rationalize it, you had to justify it. Uh, and, and then the hard work begins because you know, there, there's the hard work of getting to know each other. You and I know each other, that was, that was fine. Um, but but uh, beyond that, 
uh, keeping in mind that the M5 uh, era had, had basically petered out um, in the mid 90s. Yeah. And so there wasn't a lot of, of knowledge about who uh, on our side, who RAG is, and I suspect the same on your side. And so there, there, there becomes a long period of time where you're trying to figure out who they are, how it fits from a, from a, a business perspective, are, are our practices complementary? And, and then culturally, are, are we the same? Are, are we going to work well together? Are we going to play well in the sandbox? And, and that's, a, that's a long process, particularly when it's transatlantic, and particularly when there is so much, so much riding on this. Uh, and, uh, and yeah, so there was a lot of travel back and forth. There were a lot of, uh, you know, before the days of, of Zoom, a lot of conference calls, a lot of, of uh, you know, uh, video calls to, to get to know each other. And then the hard part, really hard part, is negotiating and creating the, the combination that we, we have today. Yeah. I mean, it was very interesting how it evolved, wasn't it? Because I remember coming out, you know, in 2013 to, to, to Toronto. And you, yeah, I think I think you you did a number on me, actually, because I just thought I was coming out to have a, fa a, a chat with a few people. And then you walked me into a room and there was your entire Ottawa IP partnership team sitting around ready to grill me, which they, which they did, which, which they, they did. did. <laughs> I remember it. Uh, I remember it very well. But but. You know, it wind forward a year or even two, and we had that famous meeting in London with the dinner when we all agreed between ourselves that we had the combined objective to create what we hope yeah. would become the best IP practice in the world. And we weren't joking, were we? I mean, you know, that's that was the plan, um, and it had moved forward in that time. So yeah, there I we go. And and of course, you know, when it finally came to complete and went went live in February. Uh, 2016, literally about five years before we're, we're making this recording. Exactly. You and I were somewhere else completely. Do you remember <laughs> where we were? We were, we were, you know what, Gordon, I had never been to Guangzhou in China um, before February of 2016, but I met you in, in Guangzhou. Uh, I was there to meet the, 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 the China team. Um, and you and I uh, walked into the office of, of Gowling WLG on uh, Monday, February 22. Um, and there was the Gowling WLG sign, uh, both in the, in the elevator um, yeah. lobby and, the, and, and in our offices. Uh, it, was, it was impressive. I mean, you, you and I basically had sort of tried to say, but we got to see the sun rise on, on Gowling WLG. And that was, yeah. that was, that was, well, it was, it was the first office to, uh, to open on the morning of the merger because obviously eight hours ahead of, of Europe and, um, and even, even the other offices in um, slightly west of there in Moscow, but um, sorry, east of there in Moscow rather. But yes, it was where the sun rose effectively on that. And actually it still makes my spine tingle uh, a little bit talking about it now when, when we walked into the office that morning. Yeah. Um, there we are. And, well, and you, there, you, can, you, know, you, you won't be able to see this, but on the, um, the shelf just behind me here is a picture of you and me standing in front of the Galling WLG sign in the reception area in the Guangzhou office. If you remember, you presented me with a copy of that picture, which okay. is still, still in my flat in London. So, uh, yeah, and there's such happy memories. It was such a great time for us all. And uh, and of course, you talked earlier on about you know the importance. You know, I think it was in our first session about the importance of vision, and you were talking about some of the the great guys. And of course, you and I had a plan, didn't we? We 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 wanted not just to be in the offices we were currently in, but but we had this idea for the the, the what we call the art of challenging jurisdictions, you know, difficult places to do business where we could help, and that's you know, we've been spent a lot of time since putting that into place. So uh, there we go. Now, there were two, had... I, just, I just want to say there were two aspects. There was the, the firm vision of what we wanted to accomplish as, as a firm, but, but you and I had our IP vision, which fits in yeah. obviously with the firm vision, the overall firm vision, but within IP, it was important to articulate our vision, uh, which, was, which was much of what you, you just said, uh, and, then, and then work hard over the last five years to, to try and move forward with that vision. So in the last um, few months, you and I have both handed over the reins of uh, team leadership to others, uh, you to Sheila and me to Kate Swain, and um, I'm still around and you, you've obviously retired. If you had another 10 years as head of IP, what, what changes do you think you would have been pushing for to, to build the global team? Well, it, it's an interesting uh, question. And 
you know, first of all, uh, let me let me let me say this: um, you and I did a you know, I, I think an amazing job, and it's been fantastic working with you over the past five years as closely as we have. I mean, you and I talk every day and, and email back and forth and, and what have you. Um, I, I, I am excited by what comes next. And I, I think Kate and, and Sheila uh, are, are exactly the right people to, to move us to the next level. Uh, you know, if I was still in a leadership position, uh, you know, it basically comes down to over the next 10 years, what do I think the challenges are that we would need to address? And I think, I think one of the, I, I think what I, I would do, there, well, there are two things I would do. One is, I think you need to continue to strengthen and, and reinforce the platform. Um, and that is, you know, very important in places like Russia and China and, and the Middle East. I mean, you, you need to continue to grow those, those platforms and solidify them, um, which we will do. But I think uh, over the next five years, the, the practice of law is evolving. And I think the big challenge for leadership is to adapt to the way in which um, the service is, is delivered. Our relationship with clients has changed. I mean, I, I started in, in 1981 when basically everything was done by letter. You got a letter. It, it came in the mail for goodness sakes. And now you get a text at, at, at 10 o'clock at night and the client wants an answer. Um, uh, I have never, uh, you know, every time a client comes to me and says, look, I need to, we, we need to talk about price, costing. I need to save money. You're going to have to help me do it. Um, my response has always been great. Let's talk about how we work together so that we can find a better model um, to, to help you meet your needs. And so um, that there, there is the international side, but there is also the internal side of, of getting ready to, uh, or perhaps trying to be ahead of the changes that are going to come in the, in the legal profession. And that, to my mind, that business side of what we do, that's going to be fascinating. Well, we've seen enough changes, haven't we, over the last year? And, and I think some of the changes that have been instituted to deal with the with the COVID crisis are never going to go away. Um, I think right. the world will not be quite the same um, going forward. For, for, sometimes for worse, sometimes for better. But there we are. What What would you say? And I think I know. I think I know from what we've been talking about in these two sessions where this is going to go. But you know, what would you say your happiest memories? You've been ne very nearly forty years in in the world of IP. It would have been 40 years in June this year. What, what are your what are your happiest memories? You know what I I uh, I, I was in a, a wonderful position as as I think you were of being able to maintain a practice a very busy practice while at the same time maintaining a, a management position both both full time jobs in a way but but getting to balance them uh, both um, uh, that was fun. But what I have enjoyed the most about what I've done is the people I've got to work with, both internally and externally. So um, uh, fantastic team at Galling WLG now, uh, you know, when it was, when I joined, it was just in Ottawa and Toronto. Uh, now it's in, you know, it's around the world and it's a fantastic team wherever you go in this, 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 uh, this firm. But I've also enjoyed working with people outside of the firm both clients and my colleagues in the profession. And, and I think sometimes we overlook the, the value of working with your colleagues. I have enjoyed tremendously over the last, I was trying to figure out two decades, uh, doing um, a, a trademark year in review. You do the patent year in review in, in, in London. I do the, the trademark year in review or did. I did it for the Law Society of Upper Canada. I did it for the Intellectual Property Institute of Canada. I, I uh, in fact, most recently in, in the fall, while I was getting busy, busy to retire, I organized a uh, eight series webinar on trademark law for the Intellectual Property Institute of Canada. I enjoy that. I enjoy the, 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 the profession that, and that, if I go back to, you know, starting out here in, in IP and, and not really knowing what I was getting into, one of the things that I value most is the, the, the bar that I got to work with. Truly amazing. Yeah, I knew you were going to say that it was the people and it always is, isn't it? It's always, it is always the people that stand out in your mind and, and, and the great friends that you make along the way. So what are you doing with all your free time now then? 
Well, well, Gordon, it is February in Ottawa. I uh, <laughs> am spending most of my free time shoveling snow. And when this conversation is over, I'm going out to shovel more snow. Uh, it is minus six degrees. We had several, uh, we had a fairly large dump of snow last night. I have no idea where I'm going to put the snow, but I'm going to, but, but I'm going to put it somewhere. Um, uh, beyond that, uh, you know, I'm just sort of getting settled. Uh, in an ordinary world, I would have taken some time off, uh, gone off on a holiday, done something exciting. Of course, that's not happening. So uh, my routine is pretty much the same. One of the things that I'm, I'm starting to do, I've, you have, I'm sure, as, as many people have, these projects that they set aside and say, I'll get to that, I'll get to that. Well, I've been putting those projects out and busy typing away and writing stuff up that I've always wanted to write up. And so... You know, there will come a day when um, I will have my vaccine, you'll have your vaccine, um, I will, you know, head off to London or wherever I want to go and, and see people. I am looking forward to traveling because uh, I have offers of dinner and drinks uh, from around the world and by yeah. gosh, I am going to, I'm going to bring every one of those offers home. I really am. Yeah, there's a few cities around the world we're hoping to meet up in out there where we can, uh, we can put that, put the world to rights. Exactly. Oh. It's been a great pleasure talking with you, as it has always been a great pleasure working with you. Um, as you said, as soon as the current problems are behind us, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to us meeting up again. But for now, thank you very much indeed for taking the time out of your snow sweeping to, to have this chat. And um, can I give you every best wish for a, a long and very happy retirement? Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you, Gordon. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting with you today. Uh, and, and an absolute pleasure just working with you over the last, gosh, you know, five years intensely, but even before that, you know, as Indeed. we worked on setting up the, the IP group. Thanks very much. Thank you.